GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, or reflux as it's commonly called, is the process where fluid contents from the stomach go up into the esophagus. Now this happens all the time and it happens every day to everyone, but it's a problem when it becomes bothersome, it becomes too frequent, or it causes complications. The symptoms of GERD are burning in the chest, commonly called heartburn, and we feel this uh, that's often central in our chest and it goes in an upward direction, sometimes associated with fluid regurgitation. Occasionally patients will have symptoms that are not in the esophagus but above the esophagus and that might include sore throat, throat pain, voice hoarseness, cough. Other times uh, patients may have additional symptoms that include vomiting or vomiting up blood or difficulty swallowing. These are more worrisome symptoms and definitely require workup. So a little bit of reflux occasionally is not a problem. In fact, it's even normal. There's not like a complete closure between the esophagus and the stomach. So after a meal, a little bit of fluid might come up. But it's a problem when it happens all the time, after every meal, um, on a daily basis, or even several days out of the week, or has been going on for many years, and it can affect uh, the um, person's functioning in terms of their sleep or how they eat. We diagnose GERD first by just talking to a patient and finding out if they have classic symptoms. If they have classic symptoms, and we can then actually try to treat them with a medication called a proton pump inhibitor. If they respond to that medication, as well as with other measures like diet and lifestyle, then we know that it's likely GERD, and we've made our diagnosis and our treatment all in one step. However, there are times where there might be other symptoms that are going on that require additional workup. These include weight loss, onset of symptoms at an older age, trouble swallowing, vomiting, or vomiting up blood. GERD is when fluid comes up from the stomach into the esophagus. The fluid contains acid and bile, and it's acid that's the common culprit for causing irritation to the lining of the esophagus and causing that discomfort that we often uh, report as burning. Other things that are going on in terms of just the fluid coming up is uh, how full the stomach is, and so if the stomach is really full after a large meal or a heavy meal, that might predispose someone to have a reflux episode. Certainly, if there is a lot of pressure in the abdomen, um, either from having a little bit of extra fat around the central part of our body or from being pregnant, that can cause reflux episodes. Sometimes the muscles around the lower part of the esophagus, called the lower esophageal sphincter, are weak or ineffective and don't do a good job of their normal function, which is to tighten after uh, we swallow to prevent the contents of the stomach from coming up into the esophagus. Sometimes there are anatomical issues, meaning part of the stomach comes up into the chest, and that's called a hiatal hernia that can also predispose people to reflux. We approach the management of GERD based on three different uh, approaches. The first is diet and lifestyle. Diet and lifestyle is something that um, is probably easier to say and harder to do, um, but it means uh, losing weight if we're overweight. It means sleeping with our head of the bed elevated at night, if, especially if we have nighttime symptoms. It means avoiding late meals, avoiding large meals, avoiding heavy and greasy foods, and then avoiding specific food triggers. Um, each person might have their own trigger that they really are aware about, but common triggers include citrus-based foods, tomato-based foods, dairy products, alcohol, caffeine, chocolate, and then certainly, like I said, those large greasy meals. The next approach is the medications, and medications are available over the counter and by prescription to treat GERD. Uh, they may include antacids, they may include what we call histamine receptor blockers, or they may include uh, proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors, commonly called PPIs, are very effective at completely suppressing all the acid in the stomach. So when patients are reacting to that burning sensation from the acid, these medications can do a really good job of reducing the acid so that way patients aren't bothered as much when the fluid does come up. Additionally, um, it's important to recognize that the medications alone don't take away the um, fluid from coming up. So they remove the acid, but they don't prevent the fluid. And some patients may benefit from anti-reflux procedures.
At Baylor, we have a great team for taking care of esophageal diseases, specifically reflux. We have the capabilities here to diagnose reflux and also do all the testing to make sure it is not something else other than reflux that we are thinking is reflux. These studies may include um, radiology tests, upper endoscopies, motility studies, and pH monitoring tests. We also are able to offer a treatment approach that takes advantage of all the modalities. So we can do dietary counseling, lifestyle counseling for those patients with mild intermittent symptoms, and those patients that have symptoms that might need a little bit more, we can help them with medications. And then we also have uh, an expert team of esophageal surgeons to perform anti-reflux procedures. 